We're on air. We're live. All right. Well, hey, everybody. It is that time again. Wisdom and golf. Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning golf's, in. Golf's perfect imperfections, mm-hmm. right? Got my rally cap on this week. And uh, because of the studio lights, you know, I didn't want to hide my face under a cap. And me- looks really good on Moo, though, you know. <laughs> I thought my face looked a little too somber in the last, uh, the last podcast. So I'm putting the rally cap on, and we'll see what happens. Comments down below. Let us know if. Uh, Comments we'll down let below. Dad know what if what, you what like do you prefer, not. standard cap or rally cap for me? Uh, so, uh, just to start things off, I mean, we we are in uh, our third week of the winter series, mm-hmm. and having an absolute blast. I saw, you know, I did my morning of lessons, and then you guys came in and did an afternoon's worth of lessons, and now we've got our our podcast that we're we're having a blast with in this amazing new studio Uh, we've got cameras all over the place but you know we don't want to confuse you so we're in a state or confuse ourselves because confuse ourselves yeah we're not the techiest of people we're um we're gonna ease into this uh this studio very uh very calmly Mm -hmm. and um well we are eventually going to have some fabulous guests here once we figure out how to bring a guest on uh through this technology and uh but um it's called Le Bunkers. Yeah, it's a right? great setup. And uh, LES, which is the bunkers. So in French, it's Le Bunkers. <laughs> dot com. You can check it out. It's a pretty. It's pretty cool. They have a studio in Montreal, a studio in Quebec City, and one in Sherbrooke. And uh, we're we're just lucky enough to have it uh, about uh, fifteen minutes away from our house. Yep. So uh, things to talk about this week. We have two spectacular videos that are coming out to you right here this week. Um, one of them is um, it added 15 yards to my drives. Can you believe that, Sav? you got to come back at me now. Well, I'm going to make you work. Listen, You're going to work listen, your tail feathers listen, off to listen, get me now. Listen, Linda. <laughs> um, you're supposed to hit it further than me. <sighs> okay. You're like... Well, three times I, my size. <laughs> <laughs> Little shit. But I'm old. No, you're not old. Ah, uh, man. Okay. Age is just a number. So, um, whatever they say. Really interesting. You know, the last couple of years, because I've been nursing this injury, which Moo is really helping me with right now, it's 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 coming along. Um, I've noticed that my left-handed swing was three to five miles an hour faster than my right-handed swing. And I, my right-handed swing really needed to, uh, a super warm-up in order to keep up. And um, my left-handed swing task, and it's something that we don't have in our Task 2.0, and it's something that we're adding big time to the premium channel, is the Frisbee throw. And when you look at how we throw a Frisbee, not tossing a frisbee to a two-year-old like ultimate frisbee style ultimate frisbee style thank you Sav. <laughs> yeah. so you're throwing frisbees the length of a football field so in order to do that you need that happy gilmore gathering of momentum mm-hmm. turning your whole backside to the target and then slinging the you know living snot snot out of it and it's amazing the velocity that you get from that and so if you look at, you know, from, from our, pa- our past videos and um, we have a, a super series on our premium channel called the release series. In there, there's lead hand release, which is a big one to complete the backswing. Throwing the Frisbee at a, at a very high velocity and distance really incredibly finishes your backswing. And then once you got that backswing, you want to send the frisbee into your picture that lead leg engages the kinetic chain like nobody's business and because it's all about lead hand i found myself with my right-handed swing stalling out and pushing against my lead side and it felt like i had to work a little bit harder if the lead side wasn't getting out of the way and so when i'm throwing the frisbee that lead side takes over so i'm thinking should I try to throw a Frisbee? Ah. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, don't See, touch the buttons. Technology, don't touch. <laughs> okay, I didn't even know that was there. <laughs> okay. So Savvy just put her elbow on the arrow up button on our table. <laughs> Do that again, Sav. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here, guys. So, what was I saying? Okay, we're throwing the frisbee. So we're slinging that 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 frisbee, and I and I'm thinking, let me try it on my do my non dominant side. Well, I added 15 yards. I was hitting my seven iron 175 stock, and I was pushing 180, 182. Then all of a sudden, it's 190 stock, and I'm hitting a few of them over 200 yards carry. Yeah, and I'm thinking whoa that was awesome yeah that was awesome that's a keeper so duncan one of my students online same thing he's right hand dominant he realized that focusing on his lead side is getting him to crush the ball last the last comment i got was didn't have much of a chance to practice this week but i practiced today and i'm just laughing giggling like a five-year-old at how much power i have and so we we do this beautiful video with Savmu and I. And um, so I'm giving you guys a little bit of a of a you know lesson slash tip on how to how to throw the frisbee. And so Sav gets in there and does really well. And then Moo gets in there because Moo is has a certain ambidexterity. And so you play tennis right handed. Right handed. Yeah. But you throw left-handed. Yes, I throw uh, football, baseball, um, any throw in action of a, a ball is with the left hand. But yet you sling a tennis racket with your right hand. Yeah, and throw frisbee. And yeah, I could throw a frisbee right-handed as well too. Throw a frisbee right-handed. So, yeah. so you would throw a frisbee with your right hand on on that backhand. So you must have a really good backhand in tennis. Yes. Yeah, it does work well. So, so isn't that something? So he's going to throw the frisbee with his right hand and his power side is his left side right. so so for you mm -hmm. they're working way more in sync than the average joe yeah i think that's and so it's gotta be. when we had moo throw the frisbee the last draw drive he hit was off the charts it was 370 carry yeah, that was line wild. drive center field mm -hmm. 390 plus and it was like shot out of a freaking cannon. It was like standing next to him was just a sight to behold. It was unbelievable. <laughs> it was like, holy crap, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, and for me, it was like the swing is tracking on a rail. Right. I right? Find, I find the consistency and the path through a bit more uh, streamlined with, yes. with the feel of the frisbee throw with the with the driver right and i noticed it for years for yeah. seven iron uh you were slowly creeping up you know you not give me a little cut of your earnings this year there <laughs> on long drive yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> lots of it has to do with you <laughs> All right, man. but that's uh, cool but yeah one thing to add to you know the um, the i don't know the, the, the structure with the swing using the frisbee was that i noticed for you the club at speed with the seven iron was creeping up to 100 miles per hour which which i've seen in the past you know averaging 85 89 90 right. miles right yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so now it's like you know 98 99 miles per hour which is right. which is another I, new level i even, I even surprised Moo. yeah it, it was uh frightening i was like okay this guy's creeping up on me with the with the club at speed with the irons and it's <laughs> like you can see 105 like doing 105, 100 miles per hour with the iron is not um, something you see often, you know? Right. All right. So it's like, uh, obviously, the exactly. one. Yeah. Like my warm up driver is at 105. Right. You know, and yeah. I shouldn't be getting that close with a seven iron. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. It is. So that video you guys have to see in spades. And um, it is, you know, get out to the football field with your kids. Uh, actually, one of our students is uh, doing some camping this weekend uh, in Orlando, and I told her, get yourself, go to Walmart, get a little $5 Frisbee, go go to the campsite and sling that Frisbee with the lead side of your golf swing, right? So she's playing right-handed, and she's a right-handed person, so take it with the left hand and sling that Frisbee with the left hand. It's really going to pay dividends big time for your golf swing. Yeah. 
Need to see your yeah, cutie come, face. Come closer to me, Moo. You know? Yeah, I'm just focusing on you as you uh, explain. <laughs> you know, there like, we go. Yeah. <laughs> so next one, the, the, the following video that we also did, uh, that was a lot of fun. I, I just had a blast uh, doing a little shopping spree at Walmart. Goodness. And, and so I got that grippy football because we like that football drill. And I noticed there's uh, a really cool drill that we did. We put, you know, you lie the football sideways. You know, you got, you got the, uh, the tips of the football. And we put the golf ball underneath the tip of the football. And we delivered through and under the tip of the football. And it was amazing how it held us down and through the ball. Right, Sav? Yeah. And so Sav gets in there and starts fight. What was, how far are you hitting the wedge? Uh, my pitching wedge was going like 140 carry. 140 carry on a pitching wedge for this one. Mm. Right? That's, that was my pitching wedge all season was 140. Yeah. So, and, but you were trapping it. Yes, I've gotten better at that. And then my angle of attack obviously improved a lot. Six degrees down. Yeah. I remember not so long ago, it was zero. Or up. <laughs> or up. <laughs> oh, right. wow. It was Six. the hardest thing for the irons was hitting down on it. Right? That was like my defi. What's defi? Your um, uh, challenge. Challenge, yeah. 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 that was your challenge. But, that you know, it didn't last too long. That was at the beginning when we first started out. And uh, it, it was a couple of years in the making, but mm -hmm. now it's like, holy, you know, that's yeah. like, mm. it's super compressed. It also like, it takes away the side to side visual. Like it keeps you very like on target. Having it under the football. Yeah. Just like the feeling of like getting down and through it. Yeah. So, I mean, if you sway, you're going to hit up on the damn football. Mm hmm. Have and you, and, and you can't move forward on it. So yeah. it's just amazing how it keeps you centered. Yeah. Have you used this drill before in the past at all? Or is there was uh, this really cool uh, uh, tool that a student of mine brought in one day, and I uh, tried to make a business out of it. But what was happening is that students would actually hit the darn box and shatter it, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, like his his um, um, his design was his test units, test units right? Yeah. So um, it, it was a, a little tower that you would slide out. <laughs> Um, uh, a little a little shelf that would go over the ball that would hide the ball, and you would swing you know underneath that shelf under the garage door, mm -hmm. and um, I I mean I forget the name I'm sure many of you listening have ha has seen that before this I no see it or no see them or whatever you know <laughs> like no see like the no see <laughs> And uh, it had to swing down and through. And it was pretty cool, mm -hmm. except that a lot of our students uh, would take the whole tower out. <laughs> <laughs> Did, weren't there these, like, um, like T? Yes. There's the, 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 like that we, yeah, and I just plastic, thought those, yeah, those yeah. thin plastic tees mm -hmm. that you could do that with and, yeah. and, and have a gate. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a gate. But I find that the football really did the trick. Yeah. It was amazing. Just take a normal football. Put the ball right at the tip of the football, and and you and you feel like the toe of the club's got to go underneath the football just to get through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's really cool about that is if you sway, it really gives you. Well, I'm hitting up on that football now, or if I move forward into it, because a lot of people tend to default to the ball. Mm -hmm. So if you go to that um, ball on a string video, and then you apply that, so you see the blur of the club. Mm -hmm. And you apply that under the football, like you're going through a, a, a mini tunnel. And it's just amazing how it keeps you down and through that golf ball. So that's, that's, a, that's, really, that's a really cool drill that's very easy to do. And, you know, uh, most of our students have footballs in their household. And, uh, or it's, Frisbees. Or Frisbees. And going back to the Frisbee, I saw Mu today during the lesson that we had with the couple. He... Uh, he did oh, the you, did you bust it out? <laughs> yeah, I busted it out because um, he's one of the students that I'm trying to help get more distance with. And yes, and Andre, I did, Andre, yeah, and I'm noticing the you know his lead hand release um, or just his release just needs some more maturing. Yeah, yeah, more uh, polish, more polish. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's got good momentum passing through, um, but he's holding on to the energy, uh, holding uh. on to the release. So he he, he has a uh, tendency to have the balls stay to the right. He's a righty. Yep. 
So we're working on the draw, and I try to kind of give the you know the same well, function that yeah, we that's felt. Yeah, thing too, because if you don't finish the backswing, that's one thing that I remember you know working with him because uh, they've been with us for a couple of years now. Yeah. If you don't gather enough of the backswing, don't get enough behind the ball, then it's going to be hard to release and stay anchored behind the ball, right? That's right. So the first priority is to get them behind the ball, mm -hmm. and the second one is to have them release that momentum to the right of the intermediate point. Right. And if you have enough momentum, then it feels like the club's going to release you. That's right. But if you don't have enough momentum, it feels like you got to push on it. And if you're pushing on the club, how is the club supposed to release? Right? Right. So that's where, you know, when we talk about like the latest series that we have on premium right now is the no arms series, right? We talk about how, you know, you've got those two, like if I want to take my bottle right now and unscrew it and take a sip, I'm not going to be tap dancing around the room. I'm sitting comfortably in my chair so I can immobilize my body and make a fine manipulation with, with my hands. But if I'm a lumberjack, and I'm trying to deliver an axe to the side of the tree, the last thing I want to do is be still with a heavy, sharp object about to collide with my body. So I have to use the weight of my arm axe unit and get the heck out of the way. That, yeah, that's what I was doing with Lucy today. And that's what I love about the Frisbee. Yeah. Because when you want to gather that Frisbee, mm -hmm. you have to use your lower body to gather that Frisbee. And I had a student this morning... Mark Andre, mm -hmm. and I introduced that to him because that's one of the things he's ha he's really struggling with. Mm -hmm. And you know when when somebody has a reverse tilt towards the target. So if I'm going this way towards my target and I do this in the backswing, you see this all the time on the driving range. They do this reverse tilt, and it looks like they're going to bury the club into the ground. Well, that's them throwing a frisbee at the ball. Think right. about it. If you take yeah. a frisbee. And you want to whip it towards the ball. You got to tilt this way and go go down that way at the ball. Right. So I I showed that to Mark Andre. Mm -hmm. It instantly fixed his tilt. Wow. It was incredible. It just reset the uh, understanding exactly. of target like he's bound. Pulling everything to the right. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's starting beautifully five degrees to the left side, drawing beautifully back to the center line. And his mouth was on the ground and going, "It can't be that easy." <laughs> Right? Yeah, I can see that. And it's yeah. such a simple task. Yeah. yeah. I went, like with Lucy today, I went to um, really picking heights with the driver because we've been working on using more heavy momentum in the swing to finish the backswing and like gather more like energy. More poundage. And so we ha I have her doing perpetual motion swings for her practice swing, but like perpetual motion with intention towards what she wants to do. And and then she gets the ball, and then everything body language turns into that same reverse like tilt, like into yep. the ground kind of thing. And so I was like, okay, how how do I get her to keep going that way? Because when you when you get to the ball and then you immediately like turn towards it, well then you're lifting yeah. the club in the back swing. Yeah. You have no more width. You can't finish your swing. All that kind of thing. And so with the driver, I told her pick heights. Yeah. Because if she was to maintain that height, she has to stay with that tilt towards the target kind of thing. And she smoked one out there and I was like, oh, yes, hallelujah. <laughs> Just because like, <laughs> like obviously I, I want to give the solution as fast as possible and for the students to understand and like have it click as fast as possible. So I was like, okay, perfect. Choosing the height is the right way to do it. And then she actually finished her backswing at that point. And with her, a lot of the frustration comes from being overly technical in her head. So she's always like paying attention. Like she's, she pays too much attention to, you know, am I like, where am I at? And things like that. So I had to reiterate that picking the, like choosing the picture of what you want is what is going to create your swing, not the other way around. And so I kind of have to like reverse psychology it a little bit because. Give them that. Giving them an external focus yeah. versus in their internal focus. Exactly. Right? Because yeah. I'm like, your your body is intelligent. Like your brain is intelligent. The second you give it a picture, your body's gonna follow. Exactly. And then you, when you when you're dealing with a launch monitor and you you know, you're looking at your angle of attack, 
and you can see that with the driver, you've got a downward angle of attack. Mm. That's just you going after the golf ball. Mm -hmm. So when you ask her to pick her height, if you're going three times the height of the trees, mm -hmm. And she stays with that height, it instantly fixes the angle of attack, doesn't it? And everything else in the backswing that she was preoccupied with. It's like, you don't even have to think, because I told her, I said, we take care of all the thinking in our preparation for the shot. Yeah. So what do you want to do? What's the height? Okay, let's confirm the feel with your perpetual motion because that solidifies everything. You can't force a perpetual motion drill. You can't, you know, everything falls into place with that drill. Yep. Especially when you are have intention towards what you want to do, because you can't just do a practice swing for a practice swing. You have to have intention behind it. And so everything is great. So I say, that's the preparation for everything. And then once it comes time to actually execute the shot, you can't think. It's just ball goes there. Yeah, it becomes a reflex action. Yeah, to it what has you want. exactly. It's, it has to become a feel. reflex. Yeah, it's the feel of the action in that direct in, in that height in that direction mm -hmm. into that picture. Yeah. yeah. And what I have what we're doing in our sessions is we do a little warm up, a productive warm up, and then we go into playing nine holes. Yeah. So we're going through like decision making mm. um, and getting comfortable letting go on the golf course. Even though it's a simulator, we have to get her to the point where she feels comfortable letting go because there are no consequences, right? Like the amount of mulligans that we took today to just reconfirm things. Yeah. I mean, it's it's easy peasy, right? So I'm like, this is the time this off season to fully let go yeah. without the fear of what the outcomes are. Because the only way that you're going to solidify all of the things that are going on in your, head, in your head and solidify your confidence is by experiencing the shots that are fully let go. Otherwise, we're not going to get there. And, and it's so much fun on the simulator. Because, I mean, you're not running after golf balls. Exactly. You're not losing golf balls. You're not playing for a score. You're not in front of anybody. You know what I mean? But you are working on that routine. Exactly. And the delivery and exactly what you would really do on the golf course. So it's yes. an actually, it's a simulated yes. golf shot, yes. simulated routine. Yeah. And then once, you know, come springtime, she's going to be so comfortable with that routine. Mm -hmm. And it'll be unbreakable when she gets on the golf course. Yeah. That's uh, very cool. Very cool. So, um, moving on here with the uh, so we got those two videos that we we just talked about. Um, there's a little bit of drama going on right now, obviously on the PGA Tour, and more conversations uh, starting to materialize with unifying Live and the PGA Tour. Right. But then Live comes out with more events on the schedule a few days later. So PGA Tour made the announcement that now it's the top 100, no longer the 125. So everybody who was between the 100th and the 125th is now scrambling to try and make the top 100. And that's going to make a very interesting race, you know, between now and the end of the season, to say the least. And then uh, for the Corn Ferry Tour next year, I'm sure everybody's going to be very motivated to come out of the gate with a vengeance because now there's only 20 cards available instead of 30. So uh, the window is narrowing considerably uh, when it comes to that. So it's, it's, it's really a lot. There's so many changes that have gone through the golf industry because of the split into live. Why did they reduce it to a hundred spots? Um, what was the reason? They, want they they needed to condense because a lot of times the guys are finishing in the dark, so they want to reduce the size of the fields so that at the beginning of the year, when the sunlight is limited, they're able to get the full event in. Uh, lots of, lots of different reasons like that. Uh, slow play. Mm -hmm. You know, not being able to finish because of slow play, and uh, so if there's less people in the f in the field, the the pace of play is going to increase. Um, the competition is going to get much tighter. You think about it now. You look at making the cut on the PGA Tour ten years ago. If you were even par, you were making the cut. Mm -hmm. It's three, four, five, six under par now to make the cut. Mm -hmm. 
the talent pool just keeps getting oh, better each, each absolutely each so decade. now it's 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 going to be like you can't coast anymore it's like it's full out but i don't think they were able to coast in the first place with 125 spots like that's that's not a lot well i mean you know the pga tour q school used to be a four-day tournament right then it turned into a six-day tournament Whoa. then it turned into you know uh, um, regional qualifying and local qualifying and all that stuff to make that six-day tournament. And then it was a grind, right? Mm -hmm. And then it turned into the Corn Ferry Tour. And so, you know, things are becoming more and more difficult. And with the Champions Tour, mm -hmm. like Bernard Langer was saying, everybody now, instead of just laying up with the driver, everybody's taking driver out of the bag and taking their chances because... They say if I don't make six birdies today, I will I will miss the cut. If I miss the cut too many you know too many times this year, I'm gonna be out of the top thirty. So, yeah. like, my confusion is if if you have so many talented people, mm. and the pool of talent is so deep, like why are we restricting the spots available on the tour even more? Like wow. it's it was it's already been so difficult for people to get into there. Why why are we making it harder? Well, if you ask uh, Padraig Harrington, he hates it. I mean, he's been very vocal about it. He says it wasn't broken. We don't have to do this. Yeah, you know, and, and Monday qualifiers now are are going to be a thing of the past. Yeah, and I don't think it's. It just seems odd. It feels like it's going backwards, not forwards. Yeah. Like if they use the argument of slow play, put a shot clock on there. That was my first thing. The, like there's put so the many damn shot clock out there. There's so Enough. many ways around yeah. that. Like I don't I don't understand. I don't understand. And, yeah. and to me, you know, you look at the Ryder Cup and the guys on the first tee box, the crowd's going crazy. Everybody's yelling and they're going, more noise, more noise, right? Mm -hmm. to, to to tee off. It's not like these guys can't get their focus together and this thing about shh be careful no cameras blah 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 mm -hmm. phones ringing enough already just play right mm -hmm. and here's a shot clock so now you got this is what you need to worry about now mm -hmm. so leave it the way it was 40 seconds and and that's what i tell my students one of the one of the big things that we talk about when we're teaching and this is one of the things that we do over the course of the winter is by far and away the best time to work on your game is in the winter because you, you just you can't go and make changes to your swing and expect to go out the next day and play golf yeah. against your buddies and and apply it. It just won't work it, because there's too much there's too much rewiring to do mentally around those changes. So you got to have an off season to do this with, right? So in this off season, we're, we also work on this on the on the routine, and so often. A lot of our students are saying, you know, I hate it when I get pushed or when I'm playing with somebody slow, uh, I feel like I have to I have to play faster to make up for time. you know make up for time for the person that's stealing my time. And what you guys need to do is just like these two when they're out in long drive competitions, one of the things that we talked about at the beginning is that you got two and a half minutes. You got to practice firing those six balls with that two and a half minute timeline. And that leaves you less than 30 seconds a ball. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. You, yeah. Your decision making is within 15 or 10 seconds. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, if you guys can perform doing that, PGA Tour players can do it in 40 seconds. Well, you become very efficient at it. The more you practice it, the more you simulate Duh. it, then you're, it's, exactly. it's I mean, fine. Why doesn't somebody put on the big boy pants? <laughs> and get these guys to do the freaking job on time. It's it's yeah. not rocket science. No. And my like, my routine, I can tell you right now. If I go out and play, and somebody the, the marshal comes up, I remember I was in an event at, in in Prince Edward Island when I was playing on the P, on the Canadian PGA Tour, and uh, I was playing against a very slow guy with a, a very slow guy, and we like in, within four holes we we're out of position. Mm. I called the marshal over. Yeah. And the other guy was going, what are you doing that for? <laughs> Trust me, I know what I'm doing, right? So I call him in. The marshal comes up. He says, yeah, what's wrong? He says, marshal, could you put us on the clock, please? Marshal looks at me. What? 
And then he looks and he goes, yeah, you, you gentlemen are two holes behind already. Okay, gentlemen, you're officially on the clock. And I'm going, yes, mm. right? So, because I I'm 25 seconds flat, and my 25 seconds was turning into 18 seconds. Right. Like, I drove my RV out there, mm-hmm. paid for all that gas, all that time, sponsors, you name it. I'm going to show up, and somebody else is going to steal my time. I don't think so. Yeah. So, after three holes, the guy I was playing with says. Marshall, I really feel like I'm being rushed right now. And the marshal calls out his name, says, buddy, you just took a minute six to perform that last shot. You get your act together or go home. Mm. And I'm going, yes. <laughs> I played so well on the back nine. It was like it was all worth it. But the first four holes was a complete waste. Right. Like I was freaking out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm looking at my watch. I'm going, that's two and a half minutes on that last putt. Mm-hmm. It, it felt like the whole day was going to be yeah. a big fat waste. So when I have a student of mine that says, well, you know, these the group behind us is kind of rushing us and we're a little slow and what do I do? Mm-hmm. I said, okay, you tell the person you're playing with, if it's a member that you've never played with before, you say, listen, I know my routine is 25 seconds flat. You can go ahead and put your put me on the on the watch. We're behind right now, and the marshal's going to come to us, and he's going to ask us to play faster. And I'm, I'm very uncomfortable right now because I know I do my I do my homework so that I don't have to put up with people pushing me from behind. And if it's just me and my husband, and we're 25 seconds each, and I'm being pushed, I can go to the back group and say, hey back off mm-hmm. you want to put me on the clock I, I put, i'm 25 seconds that's the the magic number i said i got 40 seconds to hit my shot mm-hmm. i paid my dues mm-hmm. i'm not you know holding anybody back so back off you know yeah. mm-hmm. so then when you do your homework and you feel confident about your routine then that should be the least of your worries and that's why you know, that's one of the main things, one of the major things that we help our students with uh, during the winter season is to get them to have a very productive, very succinct routine. For sure. Yeah, like, I feel like that could solve a lot of issues for what's going on the PGA Tour. And it just feels like in a world where we have so much opportunity and so much growth and, you know, that, that kind of thing, it feels like it's taking away growth from the sport. Like you're limiting it yes. even more. Yeah. It's like why why are we not trying to grow it? Like there's there are ways around it. Like it just doesn't seem fair. Like well, I mean, human machines are highly adaptable machines. Mm-hmm. Right? You just have to implement it. Yeah, there's gonna be some growing pains. Yes, there's gonna be some complaints. But don't take the easy way out. That's it. Because now just don't do it because so many guys are taking advantage of the situation and it's well, not fair. And I, I just feel like right now there's probably so many guys seeing this change and being like, I might have to give up on my dreams because I just, there's not enough room. Like there's, right. you know what I mean? Like right. the time and the it's, effort and the money that you put into trying to get on tour is probably going to be too much for the spots available and they're just going to feel like it's not even worthwhile. It's not going to be as much fun. No, shrink. so there's like so it's many It's not going to be as much fun. And, it, and th- the thing is, if you're in a top 50, you're playing in the in the top events and you have no cut events, you're going to make money and you have an easier way to stay there. And the people who are hovering around the 100 yard, the 100 yard, the, the, the 100th <laughs> spot, they have life much, much more difficult. And uh, you think about it. I mean, there's way more than 100 athletes in the NBA, in the NFL. I mean, there's 100 athletes in one team, no? Give or take, yeah. yeah. Bang was on, uh, <laughs> right? was on the reserve. You, you got the whole PGA Tour <laughs> roster in one, in one team in the yeah. NFL. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. It's a different business, a different beast. Different, different beast altogether, yeah. absolutely. This guy, like I said, Sav, I, I am, I'm with you on this one. You, what's the reason of shrinking the game that way? Like, are they trying to make it exclusive for the the top players, or keep keep a certain status quo? Like, I want to know the real reason, not just like the reason they're giving to the public to look good or yeah, to justify it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, is it a step in the right direction? That's no. 
I'm going to say no. I don't think t- taking... Time will definitely tell yeah. and it won't take long. Yeah. I just uh. don't think taking away... I don't. It feels like going backwards and going backwards is never the right decision, in my opinion. Agreed. I feel like there's always a way forward and there's always... Like, we have that, so many resources nowadays in our world, like... That happened to the LPGA a while back before Mike Wan took care took uh, took over. Mm-hmm. They were down to three rounds a week oh. because they said, "Well, it's hard to compete with the PGA Tour, and so why don't we finish on Saturdays? We'll do Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I've had the final round on Saturday, so that uh, we don't take up the limelight of the PGA Tour, and there's more eyes on us on the Saturday." Yeah, but and it backfired like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it was dwindling. They were losing sponsors. And and, and then when Mike Wan came back, he said, nope, four rounds back in there. And, yeah. and I mean, he grew it back into the, the splendor it is right now. I mean, yeah. you look at a lot of the events, they're making 300, 400,000 first place prize money. Yeah, the first keeps going. Where, sure. where it was like many events, it was under 100. Yeah, there's still like a lot of room to grow, obviously. Yes. And I think, but are, but they're on the right track. Oh, for sure. It's a great product. It's a it's um, it's like DP World Tour. It's a worldwide tour. Mm-hmm. And you think about it, when they play in Europe in the summer, they basically go to each individual country. There's an Irish Open. There's a Dutch Open. There's a German Open. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, the French Open. So. And not the you know Scottish and British. Mm. So I mean, look at all those fabulous events that they get to put on. I think DP World Tour has got you know the wind in their sails right now, and the LPGA is very much along the same lines because mm-hmm. they're going through Asia and Asia golf is really booming out there. Yeah, and so it's a so they they turned the LPGA Tour and the DP World Tour into world events, world tours, and PGA Tour just got their product dinged by live and live is a world tour right so um it'll be interesting to see i think i i think they they're they're just taking a hit and they and they're trying not to dilute the product the th- one thing i want to see more from the lpga um is more like I don't know, like interactive interviews with a lot of the women, yes. just to get to know their personalities a bit more so that people have something to latch on to in terms of yep. like who they are as people. Because I feel like when you don't get to see somebody's personality, it's hard to like really um, build that like yep. dedicated fan base kind of thing that's going to like go back and watch you every time. Mm-hmm. But um, I saw in the in the most recent event they had um caitlin clark in the pro-am playing with nelly corda and there was such a huge turnout because like you have now you're transcending multiple sports at the same time which is really cool so i think incorporating more of that into the lpga and having like pro-ams with like cool people from other sports would introduce people from other sports to the golf world and like maybe spark maybe. that interest and maybe. just keep Look, growing it that way steph curry you know, getting in yeah. there with, with the, the, the LPGA mm-hmm. and, you know, do that with like the pro-ams on the PGA tour. Well, and like, like do, on a Wednesday um, PGA tour, you could have a humdinger of an event, of an event with basketball players, football players yeah. Okay. Yeah. In, well, in the pro-am. Remember the, um, the Netflix special matches that they did with like the football players from the NFL? They did it in Vegas where the oh, the sphere was. Yeah, yeah. Like they should right. do some of that with the women too. Like if you're gonna do like a men's golf thing, it's the Capital One. Um, yeah. Uh, special event, Matt. As we were saying, we were talking about the Netflix uh, special mm-hmm. where it'd be good to incorporate some of the LPGA players into those things as well, not just the PGA Tour players. So do something like um, what's the what's the oh, series yeah. called? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like swing, but then also swing. like... Oh, so like the yeah. full swing series. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, do like a full swing series. Just to build, just to build interest yeah. of, of the of the players themselves. Big time. B- yeah. Do a player profile, you know, yeah. you know, the same way they do it. And yeah. And then have like celebrity matches with the LPGA women also. Because there's celebrity matches all the time with like the PGA Tour players. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Where you see... Do like... um, Like you know how in Huntington Beach... At the start of the season for long drive, it was uh, one one male pro, one women's pro, and then a celebrity. Yeah, that you should would do be. like team stuff like that just to like build it up, and then you get to know the women a little bit more, and then you yeah. create more interest around it. Big time. 
Yeah, and you do you do nice charity things around it too. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But and I, even yeah. even if you you have to bring an interpreter out there to to make the uh, the translation for some of the Korean players yeah, or for sure. It's, yeah. uh, it's pretty cool. Like I, I, I always enjoy listening to uh, Hideki Matsuyama's interviews mm-hmm. because, you know, he'll, he'll be asked something and the interpreter will, will ask the question mm-hmm. and then he'll answer it in Japanese and you're listening to the language and the mannerisms mm-hmm. and then, you know, the interpreter uh, explains it afterwards and you're thinking, how eloquent is that? You know, it's just mm-hmm. a different way of seeing things, a different point of view. Mm-hmm. Uh, different culture, yeah. and I, I think it's a great way to bring the world together. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, um, and you know, uh, have have a YouTube because you know the PGA Tour has got a YouTube channel. The LPGA has it, mm-hmm. and they should do a lot more in in their YouTube channels to to help with that as you well. You know, I was thinking like, okay, so there's this new YouTube channel um, called Golf Girl Games. And they've built up a, a really cool traction. They're kind of like the female version of Good Good. Right. They're like this group of like very competitive women who play like scrambles and games and all that kind of stuff together and in very competitive matches. And they, they're very, very creative w- with what they do. And there's a couple of Epson Tour players that are part of it as well. Right. And they're having like such great success because like people are really latching on to who they are as people they, and they like must, their, their, their channel must be growing well oh it's growing so fast and like every time they post a video i'm always watching it and like even Mu watches it too with me and it's just like it's interesting it's it's fun to see more personality on the women's side because yeah. it's i don't know sometimes it can be a little stale i find not being able to see the personalities yeah and so this new YouTube channel, like, I mean, they're just themselves and they're hilarious and they, you get to see them interact together and like they talk about their experiences. And I, I agree. I mean, we've played a few pro-ams in Mexico and it's very rare that, you know, apart from a, 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 a boisterous caddy, mm-hmm. like Doug Gim's caddy is a riot, mm-hmm. yeah, right? Great. We had a great time with him. Yeah. And Doug was easy going, and uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, Stefan Yeager when I played with him. But there were a couple of other guys that we played with that they just keep to themselves. You know, mm-hmm. they're very quiet, and it's you know you you don't know much about them. And like mm-hmm. Bill Haas was a pleasure to play with. Really was, enjoyed yeah. Bill Haas. Um, you know, and and I, I we're wishing him nothing but the best. Would love to see him come back. Uh, Because, I mean, he's a past FedEx Cup winner, for crying out loud, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think YouTube golf is such a cool way to to showcase yourself. And it's a shame that, you know, the PGA Tour and I'm assuming the LPGA Tour have restrictions on their players in terms of, like, what they can do with, like, their platforms, which I think is such a shame because... Well, you know, it's like when you you look at Wesley Bryant, Mm -hmm. and, and we played with him, too. We played, I remember following him around. We didn't play with no, him, but we I followed, followed him, him in the Pro-Am. And Tony. Or was it Rom or Tony? It, it was, was Tony Finau. Yeah. And, uh, and Rom, too. Rom. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're all right? playing together, I think. And, uh, you know, Wesley was a blast. Yeah. And the, the YouTube golf that he's playing right now is fabulous. And I think it's helping him on the PGA Tour. Because he's playing regularly against those guys and playing matches for everybody. And when you're doing it for YouTube, there's a lot of pressure. Oh, yeah. They just did, um, they just did a like really big uh, skins tournament. Yeah, the $100,000 thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was like fun to watch and it was very competitive and it like puts a lot of pressure on and like there's charity incorporated into the par threes. And like it's fun to watch on YouTube. Like, the setups that they have going for them yeah. is insane. Yeah, you, you really see the personalities, like the the cart. The cart uh, cams. The cart cams. I love the cart cams. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> right? Yeah, because you're just watching people have a conversation. Like, it's just so normal. Like In it, a golf cart. Yeah. It's, like, it's like having, you know, uh, a podcast mm-hmm. right in the middle of the golf cart. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think that guys like Rick Shields, he's definitely improved his golf game. He, I mean, he ber- he beat Bernard Langer by three well, in, in nine holes. He won forty five grand in that game in that skins match. Oh, really? Yeah. So it was really really competitive. So what happened? Like, I think the first 
It was 20,000 because the skins carried over. So yeah. there was a hole worth 20,000. I think it was the fourth hole, maybe something like that. Yeah, because each hole was worth five grand. And um, he won that one. And then everything else carried over until there was $25,000 on the line. And then he won that one. Wow. And so he won the first nine skins of the match. Rick Shields. Yep. So you see... All of that practice on YouTube playing finally is is paying off because at the beginning he was really struggling, you know, and and I think that's what made him uh, uh, very endearing. To that's uh, relatable, it's like relatable, yeah. You don't want to come off as like robotic and perfect all the time because that doesn't really exist. Exactly, that's one thing I noticed is um, the, the last time I watched him uh, in a match with Bernard Langer. I, I'm a big fan of Bernard Langer because he's very. Um, very regimented in his in his routine and and the way he goes about and he dissects the golf course. I mean, he almost won the last event, age sixty seven, Sav. Mm -hmm. You know, reducing the field at one point. Yeah, yeah. That was and I heard idea. that and I was like, that doesn't sound like a very good idea. Yeah, no, no. Like immediately, I was like, mm. in the in the top one twenty five, anybody can win. Well, yeah, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, with you think about it, with all the um, the the upper level events that they have the signature events mm -hmm. and they're you know there's no cut and if you're in the top 50 or top 60 or something like that you you get to play those events um it's like you get a free you know you get the free wheel at that even if you finish last you're making money right you're like making 50 grand mm -hmm. so uh it really gives you an advantage on the on the rest of the field as far as raking up or racking up FedEx points. That's true. And so it becomes a really exclusive club after a while, right? So to you know, like you said, it's uh not uh there's something you know, something not right about it anyway. Something not no, doesn't not right. it feels icky. It, <laughs> <laughs> it feels icky. That's a good yeah. expression. Yeah. 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 So because you think about it in terms of like our perspective as athletes ourselves, like if I were to if I was in that situation and I I maybe wasn't like doing the greatest on tour. Hearing that they're cutting the field even more, I'd be like, okay, well, um, maybe I should reconsider my career path. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like immediately, yeah. like you, you obviously don't want to think like that, but you also have to be realistic at the same time. And I just like, yeah. I just, my heart hurts for all the guys who have to make decisions now. I'm like, am I even, do I even pursue this anymore? Mm -hmm. Like it, it Kind of just like smashes well, just, dreams. Uh, you know, it's like you 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 make a decision because at one point, uh, are are you going to spend sixteen hours a day working on your game just to stay in the top one hundred? And what kind of a life is that going to be? Right. So, so there you have it. Um, what? Well, I mean, where are we now? I mean, I feel like that was a pretty good podcast. Yeah, that's a pretty it, gosh it, darn it, good it, podcast, you guys. Everything that we needed to. It's like uh, it, 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 my iPad has not recognized me, Sav. Oh, it's the backwards hat. <laughs> so, um, so stay tuned. I mean, uh, we're gonna have a fabulous podcast with Jamie. That uh, one on might WRS. not be video <laughs> because we still have to figure that situation out. It's gonna be the home studio. But it'll be the yeah. home studio, like classic uh, audio. Yep, and hopefully uh, Oliver will help us. Uh, put that together and today was one. yeah today was a little bit of a challenge but uh we hope that you enjoyed uh this this podcast and uh we'll talk to you guys real soon bye take care